<laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to be making really delicious orange chicken. <laughs> orange chicken and uh, chili garlic chicken. So this video we we broken up into two videos. Um, you'll see how to do orange chicken, and then I'm gonna do chili garlic chicken. So we're gonna start with the, well they're pretty much similar except for the sauce part. So uh, we're gonna start with um, the seitan. So as you remember from our, um, from my WTF chicken, the wash the flour chicken, I shredded the, the chicken like it's, it looks like shredded chicken. So what I, I and then I recently bought one of those um, Food savers, you know the vacuum seal because it was on sale. <laughs> How can I pass that up, right? I just vacuum sealed it and put it to the freezer, and then I just thawed it. Now I'm going to marinate it because um, it, it, even though it cooked out a lot of that vital wheat gluten flavor, um, it does still have some of that um, vital wheat gluten flavor. So we're gonna kind of like mellow it out. Just like chicken, you marinate chicken to have that that chicken flavor out, right? Like that um, that that gamey kind of flavor. So um, if you have fresh ginger, that works really well. I'm out of fresh ginger right now, so I'm just gonna use granulated ginger. Ginger. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon. Then I have fresh um, garlic, so I'm gonna add about two cloves of fresh garlic. And it should come out to about one and a half to two tablespoons of fresh uh, minced ginger or microplane, whichever you uh, prefer. If you have a garlic press, use a garlic press. So we're gonna put this in. We're gonna take soy sauce and we're gonna add about three tablespoons of soy sauce. And yes, it's gotta have lots of garlic. I mean, garlic, lots of black pepper. So I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of black pepper. If you don't like black pepper, you can omit it. I think it, it adds to um, kind of like mask that vital wheat gluten flavor. And then um, we're gonna add maybe about a teaspoon of sh sugar. So once you have um, all the ingredients, you're just gonna mix it up. And you're gonna let it marinate. And you don't really need to marinate it because this is already fully cooked. You just want to impart the flavor. So let it sit here and let it all just kind of mesh together. And now we're going to work on the, the batter part. So in my restaurant, I didn't really have time to do a separate batter for this. Like um, they do in Chinese restaurants, you know, to make uh, sweet and sour pork and chicken. I used to just use like my tempura batter because I used to have tempura on the menu in my restaurant. So we're gonna add just, this is about a cup and a half of cornstarch in here. We're gonna add just, just tap water. We're gonna add just about a cup, just to, um, I mean the same amount of, <laughs> same amount of water. So um, if you have a cup and a half of cornstarch, we're gonna add a cup and a half of water. And so after um, you mix it up really well, we're just gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. And what's gonna happen is all the starch is gonna settle to the bottom and the top's gonna be clear, clear water. So we're gonna dump the water out and that's what we're gonna make the um, batter out of. So the first recipe we're gonna be doing is the orange chicken. I mean, I sold a lot of this recipe. So, okay, so fast forward about 15 minutes. In here, I have the cornstarch. You see how the water separated from the starch? 
So what I'm going to do is discard the top, which is just the water part. Okay, now I'm left with starch that is just like wet. Have you ever like made this in like grade school or was it no junior high, sometime around there? And then kind of this was like in science class, how like density works. So like powder as a cornstarch, it moves around, but when you add water to it, it comes like when you hit directly, it becomes like solid. So this, that's what you're looking for. So you're just discarding the water and you just want it just wet so that it's the consistency like, is like this. So um, at this point, we're gonna have our oil heated up, which I have here. The oil is heated up to like um, 350 degrees right now. And so when this is ready, Make sure your oil is ready to go before you do this next step, which is really crucial. Because this cornstarch water mixture will separate on you if you let it sit. I mean, like it will settle to the bottom. That's what I mean. So we're going to add this cup and a half of cornstarch to the seitan mixture. And this part is going to be kind of like a little tricky. So you're gonna basically go in with your fingers, with your hand, and you're gonna massage and try to coat the seitan evenly. Yes, it's a little tricky. <laughs> what you can do is let the um, cornstarch kind of like relax a little and then let it coat. As it droops, you lift it up and you can let it coat all the uh, pieces. All right, here we go. You see this nice batter consistency that we have right now? So right now it's at 350, so we're gonna drop these in. But I'm not gonna put all of it in there because if I put all of it, it's gonna boil over. So I'm gonna probably do batches of three. I drop it in I try to put one piece at a time so if you're uncomfortable dropping it in like this you can put it on like a spoon and then drop it off the spoon with another spoon If you have two spoons here, I'm gonna mix this up, take it up to the oil, and just drop it in like that. I mean, I had a lot of burns from deep frying in my restaurant. So we're gonna let this fry until like, remember the trick about the deep fat frying? If you see a lot of bubble, that means it's not done. When the bubbles get smaller and then less violent, because <laughs> right now these are huge bubbles that are like really going. So we're going to um, keep cooking this. This is gonna be just a few minutes, maybe about three to four minutes. And then as you're frying, you want to try to get these little pieces off out of the oil. Because these little pieces will continue to like get dark. And when you put fresh um, thing to fry in there, it's going to stick to the fresh um, seitan. And it's going to be like brown burnt pieces, so you don't want that. So you see how the bubbles are getting smaller now? So we're going to... It's been about two minutes. We're gonna let it go for another two minutes. Or until the color is golden brown. We used to say GBD, golden brown and delicious. 
<laughs> That's what they used to teach us at Culinary Institute of America. One more baking breads or any baked good. Bake until GBD. Golden, brown, and delicious. So, yeah, these are just about almost done. Yum. Who loves orange chicken? Orange chicken actually like well the name is very American because there's no orange chicken in Chinese uh, but they do have something similar it's called and I don't even know if General Chow's or General Chow's chicken TSO is Chinese either because I think that's an East Coast thing so what Panda Express did is took General Chow's chicken and they call it orange chicken and kind of like called it their own but which is like recycled stuff from east coast chinese restaurants so the bubbles are a lot smaller and the color is nice and golden brown that's when i'm gonna take it out so if you wait for the bubbles to disappear completely <laughs> you're gonna get seitan jerky <laughs> you know so first bit is done the second so you see how the the corn starts settle. So I'm gonna like mix it up again like this in the bowl. I'm gonna make sure go from bottom to top, and then just drop it in individually. I used to take fistfuls in the restaurant because when we're super busy, and then just drop it in like this. <coughs> I just got a tiny bit of oil on my hand but not enough to burn me so yeah I used to take four or five pieces at once like this and then I used to just drop it one by one making sure they don't touch each other so I mean if you want to practice that skill you could but it's not like you're gonna be frying like uh, seitan for like hundreds of people like I did at the restaurant you know <laughs> Good skill to have, but not unnecessary if you're just cooking at home. Alright, so we're gonna fry the rest of these and come back. But before I go, look, this piece right here. Look how golden brown delicious it looks. Mm. So at this point, If you add a Chinese spice bite to this and salt, you would have popcorn chicken. The Taiwanese popcorn chicken, that's how you make it. But we're gonna go a step further than popcorn chicken. But this is so good. Look how crispy it is. Okay, so now that we have this really golden brown and delicious seitan chicken all fried up, we're going to uh, make the orange sauce. So orange sauce is really simple. You remember that teriyaki chick teriyaki sauce video? I'm gonna link it right here. Okay, we're gonna need one cup of that. This will serve about two people. And to the one cup, I'm gonna add half cup of vinegar. And then quarter cup of sugar. So once we add all those ingredients together, we're gonna mix it up. And we're not done yet. <laughs> so this is the chili garlic sauce um, you buy at the Asian market. Um, it's Vietnamese chili garlic sauce. So this is the sauce that I used to uh, make chili garlic sauce chicken and also I put a, maybe about 
tablespoon into my orange chicken sauce. It adds a lot of flavor. Um, so this is basically the um, orange chicken sauce. And it looks really thin right now, but once... Um, and you notice there was no orange in the recipe. Um, that color and the flavor and the sweetness, they all come from vinegar, soy sauce, and sugar. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, if you look at orange chicken recipes, it has, like, cornstarch, sugar, um, soy sauce, garlic, ginger, all bunch of in random ingredients. But if you make that teriyaki sauce, you can, it's so versatile. You can make teriyaki chicken, you can have it on rice whenever you feel, feel like it, or you can even make sauces like this. So simple. Okay, so we're gonna add, I'm only gonna add half because I don't wanna make too much. I'm gonna have to eat it all. And also, I'm also gonna be making uh, chili garlic chicken after, so I don't wanna be like eating so much fried food, like two portions of it, okay? So, I'm gonna turn the heat on. We're gonna let this reduce. So when it reduces, and so you see how it's thin right now? We're gonna let it reduce to about halfway. And it's gonna get, like the bubbles will turn out like kind of like really fast. It's gonna move really fast. And they're gonna be big. And as the liquid evaporates, it's gonna, the bubbles are gonna slow down a little. And then it's gonna be a little smaller. So when that happens, that's when we put our, our crispy chicken in there. Or seitan, the fake chicken. I just can't stop eating this. It's so freaking good. Mm. If you see my vegan picking duck recipe, I show you how to make Chinese five spice. I'll link it in here also. You can take these seitan chicken, just um, powder some Chinese five spice along with a little bit of salt, and you have the Taiwanese popcorn chicken. Okay. Vegan, very easy. It's so crispy, y'all. I mean, you just, I mean, texture wise, you won't know that it's chicken. Flavor wise, until like when we put it in here, you probably won't be able to tell that this is seitan when you're eating it with the orange sauce. I'm telling you. You see how the bowls are kind of like. It's gonna get slower because the thickness is gonna be, the viscosity, viscosity is gonna be a little thicker. Another way you can kind of tell is like when you squirrel it around the pan, the way it moves. Ah! Oh. If you have chunks of pineapple, you can throw it in here also. I used to call it pineapple orange chicken actually. It's been so so long. It's been about two and a half years since I <laughs> had that restaurant. So. Yeah, in here, this is the time you, you would add pineapple chunks to it. You see how the bubbles are like so much slower? And the sauce is thicker. So I'm actually gonna turn the sauce on, heat off, and I'm gonna add my seitan. And then this seitan amount was about a pound. So I have a pound of, uh, I'm gonna turn it back on. And then loosen the sauce to make sure that it coats every bit of the uh, the fake chicken. Do you hear that? Oh, so good. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Yum. Now you don't have to wish that Panda Express or your local Chinese restaurant made you some vegan version of this. And if you don't like seitan, what you can do is take extra firm tofu, pat it down really dry, squeeze, squeeze as much water out of it as you want or as you can. Then cut it into uh, little square pieces and do the same thing with the cornstarch and fry it instead of using uh, by the seitan. I mean, as long as you have the technique.
it down. It's easy. <laughs> chicken doesn't that look freaking delicious come on <laughs> I'm so excited I made some um, I made some saute of like onions with some shiitake and asparagus since I had asparagus my parents came to visit me about like three weeks ago and the day before they left, my mom bought a big bag of like asparagus but if, for emergency, they had to go back right away the next day so I've been eating asparagus throughout <laughs> this whole three weeks but luckily it stayed still, you know, fresh so I just sauteed it with a little bit of garlic and vegan oyster sauce so in here, oh my god I'm just getting so excited I made some steamed rice I'm gonna eat the orange chicken first. I mean, this was made before the chili garlic and it's been sitting for about five minutes, but still. Can you hear that crunch? Oh my God, the flavor is so delicious. Mm. First thing you taste, you think it's orange, but it's from the vinegar, sugar, and the soy sauce. And then I get that garlicky, a little bit of chili flavor from the chili garlic sauce. And then that sugar rounds it out. I mean, this is so good. You can hear the crunch, right? So crunchy. So good. I'm gonna save the rest for dinner because I'm pretty full right now. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this later on. You see, I didn't even touch the vegetable because I really didn't even need that. This is all I needed with rice, but I wanted to feel semi healthy, you know. <laughs> so, so if you're gonna make this and you're gonna serve it for dinner for a dinner party, if you wanted to make all the prep ahead of time. Yeah, you can make the sauce, reduce it halfway, have it sitting off the stove, off the heat on the side, fry all that seitan with the cornstarch, have it off to the side. So when you need to put it together, you can just start heating the sauce and you throw the um, seitan, you keep it on a tra uh, tray like I, I do, with a rack. So all you have to do is just stick this into the oven. If you have a convection oven, that's even better. It will heat it up. And make the seitan crispy again. Well, crispier. It's probably crispy, but you don't want to serve just tepid food, right? You want to serve hot food. So warm it up.
and by the time it warms up, your sauce is gonna be thick. They're gonna throw it into the sauce, just toss it. So if it, get, if it starts getting too thick, you have to start all over again. As long as it's not burnt, you can add a little water to it if it's too thick to thin it out a little. And then add the chicken at the right consistency. Oh, I hope you enjoyed the video. So look for both of these videos, the chili garlic chicken and the orange chicken. <laughs> so easy, right? With the teriyaki sauce, just a few more ingredients in each and you have totally different dishes. Okay, so that's enough topic. Please like the video, uh, share it with all your friends, subscribe if you haven't. Again, the more more video, I mean, more people like the video, it's gonna the YouTube algorithm. That's how it works. It shows to more people. So make sure you press the like button. <laughs> Even if you thought, eh, this guy's a clown, just press the like. It's free, okay? <laughs> it's free for you, <laughs> and it gives me an incentive to keep making videos. So again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.